Good morning, everybody. It is December 14, 2022. Welcome to Change the Shed. This is episode 100 or thereabouts. I didn't actually count them exactly, but YouTube tells me that we're at about 100 episodes. So it's really um, fun to have been here through all of that. Obviously, started this when our lockdown orders started for Change the Shed in March of 2020. So we're coming up on three years in March. Um, and I've had so much fun that I'm still here. Um, and some of you continue to come and um, do your weaving and watch uh, with me and all the rest. So I'm glad you're here and I hope it is useful for everyone. Um, I've been watching you all come in from all over the place. Um, it's really fun. Um, just from people right down the road in Highlands Ranch, um, Illinois to Canada and Chicago and um, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. That's a beautiful place, Monica. I've driven through there. It's been a while, but um, yeah. Uh, Julia's here from Germany. Thanks for running home from work, Julia. That's really sweet. Um, Sally's here from Washington and Nan and Paula from Vermont and um, Mary from Wisconsin. Oh my gosh, Hilly's here from the Netherlands. Uh, Karen from Massachusetts. Laura from Florida where it's super humid. Um, it's a different world for me, Florida. I'm just not um, a Southern, just not used to the humidity. Julie's here from Washington and um, Carolyn from the north of England. I've been watching that um, veterinary show that, uh, yeah, anyway, on uh, Masterpiece Theater. So I love the landscape of the north of England. Uh, that's a total aside. Barbara's here from San Diego. I know I'm going to miss some of you, but Dana's from New Mexico. Uh, Michelle from South Carolina. Victoria's here from California. David from the UK. Uh, Cape Cod, Mary Lou, uh, Cleveland, hi Anne, uh, Massachusetts, Leslie's here from Vermont, um, Quebec, uh, thanks for coming you all, another um, from Ottawa, Canada, Judy, um, thanks Susan for all the congratulations, um, Michelle's here from New York State. Kate from Idaho Falls, and Linda's here from Maine, and Marlena from Texas, and Carol from Bainbridge. Oh my gosh, they go on and on. Judy's from Santa Fe, um, Austin, North Carolina, um, Kate, oh, California. I was like, that doesn't make sense. Um, Kate is in Northern California. <laughs> um, and thanks for all your kind messages, you all. Robin's here from Ontario, Ruth from Maine, um, North Carolina, Claudia's from the Bronx. Um, okay, I, um, yeah, I'm so glad you're all here. Uh, before I forget, I will be back on, I think on January 4. So I'll be gone the next couple of weeks. I'm just gonna take some holiday time off. And I'm 90% sure I'll be back on the 4th. Watch my newsletter just in case. Um, some snowstorm or something delays um, a trip to a child's birthday party. But I think I'll be back on the 4th. And um, yeah, I'm planning on continuing Change the Shed uh, in 2023. I think we're going to have a lot more fun. I have a couple projects in mind, and I hope you have projects in mind also. Um, I'm not going to talk about planning next year today because um, let's just enjoy December, right? But um, maybe next year we'll talk about planning uh, what we're going to do in 2023. So this week I reviewed um, all of the episodes. I mean, I didn't watch them all, but I did go through them all and looked at what I did and um, tried to pull out pieces of just so I remembered all the things I worked on. I was amazed at how many different things um, I worked on and all the different things I talked about. Um, Turns out that the things that will make me cry live are racism and wildfire. And um, I don't remember any tears particularly over COVID, although maybe they were angry tears. Um, boy, a frustrating situation. Um, I have a lot of gratitude to all of you. Thank you for 
coming and um, so many messages about the support you've received from Change the Shed and I have learned a lot myself through doing this, which is why I am going to keep doing it because it has been a lot of fun. Um, those of you who have donated, I appreciate it so much. Thank you. I have had so many beautiful messages this morning just from people who are saying congratulations on um, 100 episodes and I appreciate the financial support also for the technology and the time that the whole thing takes. Um, I think Change the Shed has, I have notes over here, sorry. Um, Change the Shed has kept me playing and exploring and um, just having fun with tapestry. I feel like um, it's easy to get caught in perfectionism and, you know, it has to be right and all of that. So it's been an experiment for me to play with um, just letting go and just playing on camera and making mistakes. And I hope that's been useful. Um, it's been fun for me, a lot of reroutes, experiments, um, things that did not work very well, things I never finished. Uh, although most of the pieces that um, I'll show you today, I did finish. Um, so I guess that's good over the span of three years if a lot of tiny tapestries got done and a few larger ones. Um, yeah, I wove a lot of different things and um, I hope to weave many more and I hope you do too. I think part of the thing is just to keep going. Um, let me just look at, oh, you all are just still saying hello. Um, thank you all for your very kind messages. Um, yeah, it's supposed to be snowing across the Midwest yesterday and today. Anyway, we didn't get any snow in, on the front range, but hopefully the mountains got some. Um, yeah, those of you in Colorado know it's windy. You might even hear it outside. It's um, quite windy today. So, uh, yes, yes. Uh, thanks, Jennifer. She says she's going to donate a quarter per episode. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, oh, Marlena, thanks. This scarf, I chose this scarf because this scarf is one that I made when I wove, um, I used to weave fabric. I got into weaving as a fabric weaver and I had an eight shaft Gilmore loom and that's what I wove this on. I wove I had four or five of these for several of my family members have them, but it's silk and it is a couple different colors. And there are, you can see I got the one with the threading error. It's probably the first one on the loom and I think I fixed the threading error. Um, but it was sort of a beginning project for me, and um, I like remembering where I started with weaving. So thanks for noticing, Marlena. Ah, snowing in Idaho. Hi, Sarah. Um, Karen from the UK. I'm glad you're here. It's our first time live. Um, it's a great episode to pick for your first time live. Um, I'm going to play you a video. Now, this is about eight minutes. This is what I spent the last week doing, um, going through all those episodes, making little clips of what Change the Shed has been. I'm hoping this will work. This is untested tech for me. So um, I guess that's sort of how Change the Shed has been anyway. I've learned a lot about technology. So if it fails, my apologies. Um, I don't think it will, but uh, just let me know if you can't hear the video is my main concern. Um, and it will be on my YouTube channel later today. So if somehow it doesn't work out, um, don't worry, it will be, um, it will be the next video in my YouTube channel. So this is, um, let's try it little video about the last hundred or 99 episodes of change the shed. And, um, yeah, let me know in the comments if for some reason you can't hear it. This is day one of um, broadcasting from my studio. I think I can do this. Let's see. Oh, look at that. I got picture in picture. Okay. Right there. And there's a free warp right there. So close at hand. Um, these two are by Magpie Woodworks. I really like them. You can tell right there that I screwed that up. Can you see that? 
This is um, a copper pipe loom that I made myself in my garage. One of those mornings where something just came to me. A half hitch would just be around a warp one time. So this piece has been a lot of fun. This is the only thing that is keeping me uh, remembering the date. Good morning. Good morning from all the places. Again, the internet is real stressed out, so um, I'm always trapping this here with my thumb as I'm... This is what I spin on the Turkish spindle, which is very light, and so the yarn is very... But I am so fascinated by the colors of this yarn. This is how you're probably used to seeing the saffron loom. Here it is with the extended rod. Challenging myself not to draw this line on the warp, and I'm already... And if you hold it vertically, so visually from where I'm sitting, uh, we are actually not very far from Nebraska. Don't know why you needed that geography lesson. Then I run into the problem of the toe. <laughs> so so um, yesterday, <laughs> this toenail was uh, this color, if you recall. Yeah. I'm taking this um, silk out. I don't like it. Karen's asking if there's a slit right here, and I'm sorry this is actually fairly difficult for you to see. I really like this combination. Yes, this is one of my little llamas from, um, today I am cutting this piece off. Look, it's done. Upside down for you right now. Um, completely flat. It's the miracle of steaming, I'm telling you. This is a fringeless for salvage weaving. Okay, so now I've entered my chatty stage and that means it's time for me to, I promised you something new today and I failed, but I am. Um, I'm going to make this next one pink, why not? This stuff is the best ever invented. It's but I was not gonna try to weave a realistic buzzard, so we're weaving a cartoon buzzard. Move the lines around, but whatever. How the weft travels over the warp. Yeah, it's gonna do that. Annoying autofocus. This yarn in this picture, oh, sorry, this picture. I was playing with an idea yesterday about um, using a word in a big piece um, that was a palindrome. Actually behind me, right there. So I have this image in my mind's eye of what I want here. And this little guy was super, this part was so much fun. Um, COVID, man, the pandemic, what else in 2020, right? Um, I think alien invasion is next, by the way. It is a big acrylic mirror the publication date has been pushed back one week only just just one week but the date of publication is now november 3rd i hated it y'all i just um over under over under right you just have to make it go over under okay so now can you see what i was talking about so here's the fire part i don't need to use that i'm gonna go back to my little red shoe piece this is my hand basket piece uh, it sounds like some of you are having pie for breakfast and um, sometimes if i don't want to unweave something a needle and it's just one pick a needle finished it and i was relatively pleased with it so thank you for hanging in there with me as i was weaving it but it's not as smooth as it would be with an eccentric with an eccentric outline you guys are going to tease me if i keep saying it that way i don't have a dog anymore and i still have fuzz showing up on my thing is woven sideways i'm orienting everyone including myself too uh, a whole year since we started this in just a few weeks so um I will answer Michelle's question about simultaneous contrast. Things completely crash. I'll be back in a minute. So um, I don't think they will though. Two hot pinks and a mauve. Pipe loom would be nice because you can uh, weave from both sides on a pipe loom.
you'll see the lice where it's where I have two wefts in the same shed. It'll Rebecca in real time. Nan's working on a study of a toucan wedge weave. I did bring a watercolor set with me on the trail and I had more questions. So best to just get the questions answered in a sample. I'm going to see if the audio changes when I... Okay, just so we have a marker. It's three and a half inches so far. So my future self thanks me. Um, <laughs> when you get your computer a little too close to your shafts on your loom. Dearly wanted, obviously, to get to Edinburgh this year, or last year, to see the Archie Brennan show. And so it's easy to just drop a butterfly, which switches, you know, how they're interacting. And it is super dreary in Colorado, but it's winter. It's uh, that loom is empty. I finished the wildflower piece. And if I don't like it, I will do another one because this is a small piece and the pandemic seems like it has been 4,000 years long. It's a wiry, thicker, um, protective coat. It actually has a really pretty um, surface. I maybe wouldn't have tried this yarn if it weren't for this student, Sybil. It's easy to get carried away and just roll right on past where you're supposed to be. This one, this one just makes me laugh because I think it's kind of, um, so, um, these are the jars I'm going to use. I already measured the dye out. So I made a little tech area this morning and 27 of you heard a bit of mild profanity from me. The little decisions are the things that I love. I have tons of samples. You probably can't see them. There's some of them behind me. This is what I'm working on today. Da, da, da. I'm going to weave this from the front, so I'm going to put those in the back. And then I'm ready to go, which I will be honest is freaking me out just a little bit. Playing with the weft bundle mixes is a fun thing to do. It was just one of those things when someone asks the right question and you're like, oh, you could do it this way. Okay, I think I'm back. Um, apparently the tech worked, hooray. Um, that was fun to make. Uh, it took a lot longer than I thought it would, but um, there are things that I had completely forgotten that I had worked on and that we had talked about. So it was fun to see that again. Um, my new band name is gonna be Two Hot Pinks and a Mauve, or Mauve if you're you know, from somewhere else in the country. Um, and I kind of had forgotten that my book came out during um, the pandemic. So yeah, that reminder that the uh, release date for my book was the 2020 election date in um, the United States, which was um, something. <laughs> anyway, um, the book is still doing well. I still can't get my um, fingers going the right way. And I could mirror my video, that would probably help. But uh, it was really fun to um, make that and to remember all the fun things that we talked about over the years. And the only regret I have about Change the Shed is that it would be really nice sometimes to be in the same room with you all or have a little bit more interaction that isn't just um, comments on the videos, but for this kind of thing, I think um, this is what we have right now. So um, that was fun. <laughs> and I have um, one last piece to maybe finish. I'll certainly finish it today if we don't finish it on um, this episode of Change the Shed. But um, it's the little gnome that I started last time. It's He's almost done. Yeah, thanks you. I'm looking at your comments and um, it sounds like it was a fun time and that you could hear it. So time travel. <laughs> yeah, like it was a good reminder of all the things during the pandemic, like 
COVID hair and um, the way I just clearly didn't care at some point whether my clothes were ironed or not. I'm not big on ironing anyway, but... Um, and there were some days where it was a sweatshirt day, and I don't really guess most people really care. So, um, yeah, that was fun to do. So going forward, I've got a couple ideas of pieces to work on next year and a couple series that I started working on in the um, pandemic, like the fire series. I have some more pieces I want to do in the um the one I call the Pandemic Diaries, which was the hot flash and the hand basket pieces. I'd like to do another one of those because those were really fun. Um, also fun to do the double set and to play with those kinds of things um, on this uh, Change the Shed thing. Because it's a different way of weaving for me. I, um, I guess maybe it's not a different way of weaving anymore, like this gnome and... Um, here, let me put up the, here's the little gnome guy. Um, not so, maybe not so different anymore. Anyway, he's in the spirit of, um, of the Pandemic Diaries pieces. Um, oh, that's cool, Anne. Um, she says she's gotten several people to jump down the tapestry rabbit hole since my book came out. So that is fabulous. The more people interested in tapestry, the better. Doesn't matter um, why or what size or what kind of tapestries you weave, as long as you enjoy doing it. Um, okay, let's go over to this little gnome. And if you have more questions, you can. Oh, so right. Let's see. Oh, good. Okay. I've been playing with this tech a little bit and maybe have figured out how to do a couple things. Okay, so this little guy is, um, <laughs> um, Dorothy says she didn't really notice what I was wearing either, except the May the Force Be With You t-shirt. I love that. I was probably wearing that on May 4th, which is, um, you know, Star Wars Day, May the 4th fourth be with you. May the force be with you. I have a friend who was born on May 4th, so that is a running joke. Um, anyway, may the forest be with you is a good thing. Um, yeah, so I, uh, let me just go here and this little guy is almost done. Um, he turned out pretty cute, actually. Uh, I wasn't so sure when I started and he needs a little bit of there's a couple of tails down here that need some stitching in, but um, yeah, he looks a little mischievous, I think. All I need to do, this is the top of this fringeless for salvage warp right there, and all I need to do is weave this blue up to the top and put in the last row, and then he'll be ready to come off. Um, I was thinking of maybe doing another gnome as a friend for him, but... Not sure why this holiday season it's gnomes, but it's probably because of all the knitters out there who are making gnomes and got stuck in my head. So there's, there's something that I, let's see if I can, um, I grabbed the, uh, f the split the fringeless warp when I put that in, so I can't push that down. That is clearly just one of those things to watch for. <laughs> I love it, Verena. Uh, love your silly sense of humor and your nerdy references. I'm a total nerd, so if you're still here, you probably don't mind that. Um, yeah. It's a... Uh, takes a certain patience or sense of humor to hang out with me for too long. Hi, Alice. Good to hear from you. Um, I remember Alice from many years ago at a workshop. So in Florida. Yes. 
like I said earlier, Florida is a different animal in my mind, and someday I'll spend some time there. I know it's a beautiful state. Oh, great, Robin. Someone is making you the copper loom for fringeless. Excellent. Yeah, this particular weaving method, which is a four salvage um, weaving that gives you a shed the whole time, is works best on um, a, pi a copper pipe loom is a great loom for it. Any kind of pipe loom, actually, where you can increase the tension will work. I have a lot of fun. We have a class about that, Sarah Sweat and I. So if you want to learn how to make the four salvage thing, this little guy will come off the loom and it'll be finished all the way around. There won't be fringe or anything. So it's really a fun technique. Okay. I know this is super boring uh, weaving, but this is, I thought it might be a, way to finish out the year and the trick is to get the right color yeah that's right this is a ray sapphire oh hello Gislaine is here from Abu San what a wonderful place that is it's full of tapestry never been any other place in the world that had so much tapestry <laughs> All right. Yeah, Robin says, I love the way you did the stripes on the gnome's hat. I had a lot of fun with that. I think it made the gnome look really cute um, to change. So they're not just straight stripes. I um, just changed um, how fat they were in different places. It made the hat feel like it was slouchy instead of um, like stiff. If that makes any sense. Okay. Um. And I was drawing in design yesterday, which didn't get on a loom. I found another pipe loom though. So that's the other good thing about pipe looms is that if you don't have one that's empty and you have pipe in your garage, you can just go make another one. I do that far too often, but I did find one that is empty. So, uh, and not that I couldn't put it on this loom when this one is done, but sometimes I like to leave things on the loom because you can kind of look at them for a while before you. Actually, that might be procrastination. I don't like doing the finishing. So, and um, although with four salvage, there isn't much finishing. Um, I still have to do something with the tails on the back and mount them and all of that. And if it's on the loom, I don't feel guilty about it not being done. <laughs> um, Deborah um, is asking about jigs for fringeless. I don't know of anyone anymore who's making and selling them, um, Deborah. but I think you might be in that fringeless class and just ask me in that class. And um, I have a couple suggestions, but my favorite jig is the um, PVC pipe ones because PVC pipe is so easy to cut and you can just, and it's so inexpensive. Um, yeah. I don't know anyone anymore who's making wooden jigs. Magpie Woodworks made them for a while, but they're um, fussy. The, wood, the wooden ones are fussy. I don't think she's making them anymore for sale. Um, I'm just doing meet and separate with these two butterflies and trying to change where they meet. When I did the blues, I have only two colors of blue here, these two. And you can, from this angle, you can actually see how they blend. But I used um, demi dues. I often in my classes will show you how to grade with stripes um, because that is the easiest way. <laughs> to change the colors, but I wanted, I didn't want it to be so stripy. So I used Demi Dewey's there and I like how it turned out. Um, it looks, basically I just alternated the colors and, um, you know, so there's like little dots of each of the colors happening for a while.
The hat is not wedge weave, Marla. Good question. Um, nope, it's just straight woven. Um, so, for example, like right here, I was weaving like this, and I just built up that shape, and then I outlined it with the dark, and then I just filled in. So everything is woven, you know, perpendicular to the warp. Whereas wedge weave would be woven on a diagonal. I wanted this little piece to be flat, so I didn't want to use wedge weave, which will distort the weaving. Okay. I um, sometimes wa sort of waste more yarn in my tails than I'm sure some of you do. These tails are longer than they need to be, but. Let's see. I'm judging the chances I'll finish this in the next 10 minutes. Maybe. Uh, you're welcome, Paula. She says she's generally not a gnome fan, but um, maybe this little guy's cute. A gnome is just like shapes, right? I mean, I just looked at a bunch of pictures on the internet and then sort of made up my own guy, but um, it's like a triangle hat and like a little round body and you could put a beard or a nose or you can put eyes in them or whatever. Um, pretty, uh, could be a fairly simple form. So part of why I thought it would be fun. Um, originally, I thought I would do a weave along with a gnome, but that did not happen this month. So you can do your own weave along. Actually, I will have a blog post tomorrow about this little guy and I'll um, put a little sketch about those ideas in terms of how to make your own. And I think the one I'm gonna do next will be a, um, a lady gnome. What is a lady gnome called? A gnome with a, a braid instead of a beard. Let's just go with that. It was this or holiday ornament, tree ornaments and weaving circles just didn't seem like the thing for me this year. So gnomes it is. Um, just changing where these are meeting. I need I bet you I need four or more sequences to fill this up. Um, ah, Robin's friend who's gonna make the loom had salvaged pipe laying around. That's awesome. Um, oh, Nancy, you've watched all the episodes. That's amazing. Um, anybody who's watched all <laughs> All uh, 100 episodes should get some sort of special medal or something. It's a lot of time. It's sort of like weaving, you know? It's just like additive over three years. Um, yes, Marlena, I will show you that. She said, so if you're doing demi doing, are there loops at the back of the weaving? There are indeed. It looks, um, it works if you are a knitter, any of you, it works, um, well, you can do it with as many colors as you want. I did it on the little fire tapestry in that video where I said, this was so much fun. The one that has all the little dots of the colors, I use this technique also. Um, it works like stranded knitting. So I'm just carrying one and bringing the other to the front. You could do it less regularly and just have floats and okay I will show you Let's see if this camera will focus uh, so here this is the section where I did the um, demi dui parts and everywhere you see the floats is where the darker I was using weft bundling so I had a mix of colors like you know this one has two of the light and one of the dark this little guy here um, and then of course it got darker and darker but uh, yeah wherever one was pulled to the front the other one 
um, was floating in the back. So, and that just happened in this area where I was doing the demi dui So if you look here, you can see in this light, you can see pretty well how the, there's little dots of each of the colors happening there as it changed. Fun way to do that. Um, okay. Let's see. Oh, Gislin, good idea. Why do I weave in meet and separate now? Um, I won't change the colors anymore. It's just that um, I started down here with meet and separate on the edges and um, mostly it's just to keep from pulling in at the top. And because I had two butterflies, I could certainly just finish with one. Uh, there's no um, design reason. It's just that I'm much less likely to have the top come in if I keep the two butterflies going since they're already going. But actually right now, if one of them r ran out, I would probably just finish with the other by itself. Uh, which is probably what I will do in a second. Um, Ooh, Suzanne, that might be a secret, but you might get the fringeless class for Christmas. That's cool. Oh, I should mention that if you all have, um, you know, people who need an idea for a Christmas present for you, I have gift certificates to all of my classes on my website. So education, great gift. You can just send them there. It's in the shop and uh, they will um, be able to pay for the class and get a PDF download and then they get that to you and you get to register for the class yourself. So you have control over um, what email you use and your username and such. And if you already have classes, of course, you'll want it to, you'll want to use the same email, please. Please use the same email. <laughs> so many people who can't find their class and it's because they registered for it with a different email which means you have two accounts and I can't fix it so um, anyway I hope you enjoy it Suzanne I hope you I hope Santa brings you the fringe list class um, yes Robin I did use a PVC jig for this um, when I put this on it's uh, let's see what time is it I can grab it. Um, it's in the other room, but it's, um, yeah, I think it's half inch PVC. The stuff I used, I actually think for the smaller jig, I might have used um, PVC that's used in gardening, maybe. It's slightly smaller diameter than the stuff used for plumbing. Uh, obviously, we don't need it to be like, you know, human, whatever they do, PVC that you can use for human consumption of water. Wow, brain not working today. Um, no met, that's funny, Jennifer. Um, Lady gnomes can have beards as well. That's awesome, Michelle. I'm going to keep that in mind. Maybe beards and a braid. I like it. I don't see why not. I'm unlikely to weave fairies, but I have, I feel like I'm more of a gnome person. But I could see that, you know, mystical creatures like elves and such could be whatever we imagine them to be. Okay, so at the very top, I need to pack it in enough that it will cover those loops at the top. So um, actually, I'm going to do one more sequence. And now that Gieseline has said that, I'm actually going to go to just one. Oh, I'm going to do three more picks, I think. Because the last time across, I need just one piece of yarn. Oh, good. Yeah, Janet um, got 
just happens I'm using a Stephen Willett um, shed stick. He um, really makes beautiful stuff. And I like this shed stick a lot. Also very nice um, tool maker. Oh, great, Robin. Yeah, the loom, you'll find, I hope you'll find the loom in the fringeless class. Useful, okay. Sarah would tell me, oh, it might be enough, you guys. I think it's enough. You want enough packed in there that it will cover the loops at the top, but um, I have gone too far also. Um, I, Deb, I'm, I've lost track of wit, what the, oh, I know what you're talking about. Um, the technique of doing the demi dui it is not in my color class, but it will be when I update that class, hopefully in 2023. So that is one of the things on the list that I'll be updating in the color gradation techniques class. And anyone who's in the class will get all the updates too. So you don't have to worry about missing out on, I'm also updating Warp and Weft at the moment. So watch for some new things there coming next year. Um, uh, Barbara also watched them all. Cool. Um, oh, you guys. Um, Paula, you do, so she said, do you keep the floats loose as in color work knitting or do you tighten them as you weave? And she's talking about these. Um, they have to be loose enough that they don't pull the tapestry in. Um, so this is a little bit on the edge. I can feel where they are there. When I, sh when I steam this, it will shrink enough that I think it'll be really flat, but you do have to be careful um, when you do that, that you don't um, pull them tightly because you don't want it to pull the thing in. Um, um, thanks, Laura. Yeah, she said she just got a gift certificate from her weaver group and um, yeah, Laura is doing great things for tapestry around the world and in Florida. So thank you, Laura. Uh, <laughs> my brain is working on tapestry, not water pipes. This is so true. Let me get that jig for you. I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, Don Betterly, that's another good option, Deb. I did a couple things in early 2022 about shed sticks, and I did include pictures of Don Betterly's. Um, I don't have one right here, but, and a couple other makers are making some really nice shed sticks. So, um, so Jean, uh, or Jeannie, what happens when you go too far? Um, you just have to push harder. So the next thing I'm going to do, let me get the jig before I forget. And then I will show you what, how I do the last line of this. Um, if you go too far, it just makes the last step hard. Um, Oh, Jennifer says she loves her shed stick from Judy Cavanaugh. Right. Um, I think Judy sent me some messages when I was doing that thing, too. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of people making some really cool things. Okay, so hang on a second. Okay. Got the jig. This is my PVC jig also comes apart. So you just need um, four T pieces. And then I have a whole variety of these little ones that are cut um, to fit in here. Let's just see, um, pipe is measured by the internal diameter. Yeah, this is half inch um, height, and it looks like CPVC maybe is what you would look for for this kind. I think the kind you put um, drinking water through is a little bit thicker, but this is um, quite stiff. It doesn't really matter. It's just that the smaller the diameter um, here, the easier it is to get a smaller piece on the loom. So for this, I'm sure that I used, this is the last thing I warped. So I'm sure I used this. Yep. And 
you just um, put, and these I have all marked. Um, oops. Anyway, and then you put that in the loom and that's how you do your fringeless uh, work. Anyway, PVC. It's um, PVC cutter is a great thing and you can make any size for the jig. So it's one of the simplest things I've seen. Um, okay, let's do, got a needle. Let's do this last. I need about this much. The last row for the gnome. So there's the loop. Can you see that? Sort of. Let's see if I can. I know when I was reviewing the videos, I realized how many of them the focus goes in and out and I have some ideas to help fix that next year, but that little loop is what I'm looking for. And this piece of yarn, I'm just using two of the three, um, secures it. So I just have to do that all the way across. If you put too much in, too much weft in, this is a little bit hard to do, although it's not impossible. And you don't you don't want it too tight, but you don't want it too loose. Sarah talks about all of this in the fringeless class. So there's a whole video about this step, actually, I think. Yeah. There we go. So I can guarantee I'm not going to pull this out the loom right now because then how would I get a picture of this loom, of this gnome with the gnomet? Gnomet? Is that what we're going to call the lady gnome? I don't know. Not convinced. Um, I spent time in Iceland this year and I think of gnomes as being... Um, more hardy creatures so so I just do that all the way across and then um, I will put a picture when I finish that in tomorrow's blog post and with some ideas of how to weave your own if you need a holiday project in the next couple weeks um, you can weave your own gnome or something else it doesn't matter um, I usually take that down when I do change the shed and I left it up today. And um, that is an embroidery that my mom did when I was a baby. It's of sheep jumping over a fence. And then I thought, well, sheep, maybe I should leave that up. So there it is. Um, yeah, Suzanne um, reminded me that Demi Dewey is um, in part two of Warp and Weft. I don't show it in this way, though, of how to grade color. So... That is something I will definitely add to the um, color gradation techniques class. No, not Naomi. <laughs> I like that, Cheryl. Nicely done. Well, so I'll be back on January 4. Um, a couple things coming in January. Design Solutions 1, the first Design Solutions class I did in 2020. I will be rerunning it live starting January... I think it starts January 9. The class is actually open. If you register now, you'll get the whole class. Um, I'm not going to drip the content this time around just because for various reasons. Some people were already partway through it and wanted to be included. So, But I will be doing live Q&As every month about the content from that month. It's a six-month class. So I'll be doing this live run January through June. Um, it's all about how to design for tapestry. And I think about that class as being like, 
how to think like a tapestry weaver, learning how to think like a tapestry weaver. So if you want to be in a class where I'm doing a live thing, where I'll do a lot of live support and um, answering questions and Q&As and all of that kind of stuff, that starts in January. And um, let's see, the other thing that starts in January is a new thing I'm doing. I'm very excited about It's called the Tapestry Discovery Box. It's a collaboration between me and Just Yarn. So we're using this array tapestry yarn and 45 new colors just dropped this week, you guys. I'm so excited. Um, they're well over 100 colors now, 130 or 40. Anyway, the tapestry box will come with a course from me and yarn from Gist. So that will be um, opening January 11. You'll hear more about that in January. Um, oh, yeah. Thanks, you guys. Thanks about the sheep. I um, I don't know why I've been taking it down for three years. Every time I do change the shed and today I was like, well, they're sheep. We all love sheep. Um, okay, cool. Um, yeah, the gist box will, Renee asked when that's available. It, I'm, we're launching um, January 11, so that'll be the day you can get that. Um, yes, Nan, email me about that, but she's asking about previous people being in the live run, and yes, that's always the case. Um, I just have to do one little tech thing to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. So just email me, Nan. Um, yeah, same thing for you, Ghislaine. Just email me and I'll get you set up. And okay, cool. Yes. Um, <laughs> you probably heard an echo there. Um, I've just figured out I can do sound effects on this program, so... <laughs> Very excited. Um, have wonderful holidays, you all. I hope that you have a peaceful time no matter what you're doing. Um, whether you celebrate holidays or not, it doesn't matter. Um, I love the light and the dark and the, all the things at the end of the year. So if you're in Australia watching this, drink a glass of white wine in the sun. And um, if you are in the Northern Hemisphere, enjoy the dark nights and put up some lights and do some weaving and have um, a wonderful time with those you love. And I will see you in January. Um, yeah. Thanks, everybody. It's been so much fun so far.